welcome to Magpie Stories. Um, I thought today I would show you the process of creating a short story from start to finish. So from that initial brainstorm and that plan on a page that I've discussed before. So here we are, pen, paper, please do yourselves a massive favour, get yourself a decent pen that is comfortable to write with. For me it's these Mitsubishi um, Uniball eye rollers. So here's my tension graph for the second part of my short story trilogy. Um, the path to corruption. Bit of a cheat here because I kind of have a rough idea already of what's going to go on um, due to the planning the entirety of the trilogy. Anyway, so here we are looking at our protagonist, um, the eponymous him, I, um, the nameless character that I have created who is quite wealthy and has this knowledge of dead speak. So I know now he has already started on the path to corruption, hence the eponymous title. And now I'm sort of exploring what can he actually do with this power? Where's he going to get these ideas from? How is he going to grow in power? And the fact he ended up in academia is not lost on me. So there's going to be some elements of ritualism and knowledge, but I'm not actually going to explain where that comes from, how he found it, what was going on. I'm just going to leave that a little bit blank because I don't want to attach it to any particular culture. I want it to be quite mysterious where you can decide where you think it's come from. Um, I do do some nods back to his youth and the idea of Dr. Becker, his obviously favourite medical professional. Um, I want to keep this tone formal, again reflecting his upbringing. And I thought, okay, how can I show a massive contrast from something uncomfortable to something quite joyous? And I thought about Christmas, so I'm looking at wintertime in the 1950s, this idea of seasonal joy contrasted to something awful. And here's one thing that I found really helps ground, ground myself in writing, which is that idea of, of a key line. Um, in this case, I thought I was master of myself, master of anything I set my mind upon. And it has taken me a long time to work out where to fit that in the actual story. Um, but if you read it, you'll see, you, you keep an eye out for it, you'll find it. So here we are about to start writing now, I've done the plan. Um, I tend to listen to some lo-fi beats by Chilled Cow while I'm doing this. Um, I just find sort of rhythmic, non-lyrical music quite helpful. Uh, it kind of keeps me grounded in what I'm doing. <clears throat> so for me, actually having that this plan is really helpful um, and one thing that I struggled to overcome was to actually begin writing um, so with the plan in front of me and remember the plan is just a very very rough outline or idea uh, it is there to stimulate your actual writing it is not there as the be all and end all by all means change things around mix it up use it as kind of a loose guide um, because that's what it is. It's, it's the, you don't have to stick to your plan, but it's just a useful way of getting those ideas down that you may forget should you write, should you come to it later and go, oh, I had a really good idea. Oh, bugger, I've forgotten what it is. So, what I do when I'm actually typing out um, the story now, so some of you may have noticed I seem to be typing rather quickly. Obviously, I've sped up the footage um, because the entire process for this short story from beginning to end is probably uh, about. 10-ish hours, so I thought I'd spare you looking through the entire thing in real time. And the important thing here is just to start writing. Just start typing things away. Um, so obviously here I'm talking about him in the hospital before he starts telling us his story, just for a bit of just for a bit of setting, just for so we can have this central theme running through of our narrator as this man who is dying in hospital, knowing he's dying in hospital and having this conflict inside him, knowing that he is quite evil, that he has access to these powers, that he can do things that other people can't, and he's trying to judge what his life has become via the method of confessional. And again, I've deliberately kept the character nameless. Uh, I want it to be this sort of rich everyman, you know, that anyone could potentially fall into this. Um, You'll also notice a lot, a lot of red underlines and blue underlines. I've noticed it's quite distracting for me personally to go back and change mistakes as I'm writing. I kind of get into that awful word flow of writing. 
um, and if I stop just to go back and correct spellings and grammar mistakes I lose track of what I'm trying to do so when I'm on a bit of a hot streak I tend to just go with it the editing can come at the end so after I've finished typing things up I will go through and I'll show you that process later so as I'm typing here um, I've finally gotten to this idea of unlocking powers which he has and how the ritualistic elements going to aid him in what he wants to do to get what he wants and that links into the plan as I've mentioned before and I'm kind of playing around with the showing not telling here so I like to throw in the odd detail that just kind of fleshes out the world so I'm talking about the roguish gentleman um, I've put here they took what they wanted be it money power or the innocence of people initially I I was going to talk about perhaps um, something unsavory but actually if you leave that in the mind of the reader it becomes far worse so had I said you know they took girls as they liked I think you know what I'm alluding to if you just allude that they took somebody's innocence I think that's a lot more powerful and actually if you just dot in these little details I find it it makes a character seem more more believable certainly within the world that they inhabit so I like to add these these little details and the paragraph that I just typed out it was powers I employed now um, I refer back to the fact that he kept animals and again I'm showing not telling um, this was something that was taught to me at a very tender age when I was a wee little nipper of about 11 and my English teacher said to me you need to show not tell don't tell everyone let them try and work some things out leave it to the imagination and I'm sure that lots of you who enjoy uh, horror movies will agree with me here that it's actually much more powerful to imagine what the monster is rather than see it kind of rip your face off from the very beginning you kind of want to build that tension and that's that's what I'm trying to try to do oh and of course naturally enough have a little tea break here so uh, that's always really important back to work um, I'm trying to draw in as well ideas of family I really want this character to be incredibly unlikable um, and not at all in any way heroic or admirable so the fact that his wife has died through his own neglect that his father's trying to um, to reconnect with him um, and he, he's, he's not at all interested also uh, you'll notice I've put a really subtle little reminder to myself to remember uh, our Dr Becker as a revenge element because throughout all of this throughout all of the planning um, I was like oh actually I would be really intrigued to see what would happen if he came across Dr. Becker again, the guy that essentially tortured him as a small child through wanting to, to cure him and not allow him to be an embarrassment to his family. Um, so these deep-seated scars that he has have manifest themselves in an incredibly negative way. Everything is selfish. Everything is him at the centre of everything. Everything is about what he can get, what he can have. And the one thing that I alluded to here or that I talk about um, is this physical degradation um, and it all starts with this idea of him having these tattoos that go across him that help to amplify the power that he has um, and at this point I also thought about what could be really really horrific so I included details about um, a miscarriage that his wife has had and if you read the story there is a nod to that miscarriage and how he uses that to increase his own power to make him even more reprehensible than he already is um, again a little note to myself remember to include the doctor's revenge element place this at the end because I did almost forget to do that so I just want to talk to you quickly um, about my use of repetition in my writing it's kind of a foible that I've picked up on and you'll notice I will repeat certain phrases, certain words, or I'll repeat themes and ideas. Um, I don't know if it's incredibly popular, but it's something that I quite like to do to reinforce an idea. Um, I know lots of other authors do it as well, and by the way, I do not consider myself an author by any stretch of the imagination. I am I am a, a very much an amateur writer at heart who is trying his best to create something um, that hopefully people enjoy. So I will mention here that 
this offensive deity is what I'm what I'm trying to do is I'm actually trying to at the moment create um, a universe which characters for all the stories that I create inhabit um, and I'm trying to find a way to link that together I think at the moment I'm being rather clumsy but as I as I progress and write more hopefully um, I can make that a little more subtle rather than uh, clubbing people in the face with it so here we are um, I, I, I really really was struggling to type at this point I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you the, the sort of from where it talks about my sisters were of no importance to me to to quite a lot of the remainder of this session I was really struggling for ideas and I was really having to work hard to type things out you may notice that there's a lot of me scrolling up and down going backwards and forwards that's purely me going flipping egg I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to be doing here um, I've got a rough idea and to be honest much needed toilet break here purely because I, I just didn't know what to do and it gave me a little distraction from writing and sometimes just for your own just for your own kind of peace of mind really it's a good idea to go nip to the loo make a cup of tea or coffee uh, grab something to eat just physically remove yourself from that space just for even just a minute or two just to give yourself a little bit of clarity a little bit of idea in terms of what's going on what's happening um, and well not so much what's happening but more just to get out of your own head um, so back to work I am here this is very much thinking about the ritualistic element because I've realised there's not been a great deal of physical action within this space so now I'll start to include some more verbs like hunting and, and finding and, and alluding to this idea of of torture and finding out what you want because I thought, you know, my character's been very still, he's he's lying in a hospital bed, he's working in academia, so maybe having him with this, this sort of rippling tattoos and ink work would be would be um, a good idea to include some movement to him because he's been very, very still you know, obviously a lot of this is quite cerebral so I did want some, some physical descri description there just to, to flesh him out really and make him seem a bit more a bit more realistic um, again, repetition of this sitting cross-legged, um, and now I just want to quickly talk about framing. So, the way that I'm framing these short stories, this this triple of, of short stories, um, is through the device of this guy being in hospital, like I've said. So I'm making it so that all three of these stories will have him at the beginning in the hospital talking, and then at the end. Um, in the hospital talking or at least writing something down doing something to to confess to what he's done in sort of the vein of those classic Victorian ghost stories uh, that were written in Britain by people like M.R. James who I think I've mentioned before in one of these kind of videos um, you really should check him out if you get the chance just just really good way of building tension not a great deal of action but certainly ramps up the creepiness factor if, if you're into that that sort of thing so here I am, uh, just having a quick flick through, making sure that I'm I'm happy with the format of the story. Um, and a lot of this is just pressing F7 and having an editor and just having a look through. That is incredibly useful. Obviously, fortunately, treat myself to a little bit of sleep here so that I could come back to this and edit it with eyes afresh. And what I do when I edit is very old fashioned. Uh, some of the short stories there is I print it out and I get a pen and I physically go through and mark this off um, this may seem a little drawn out and a little bit OTT but for me personally I find the physical connection of pen and paper quite useful um, on a screen I can lose track here I can quickly flick backwards and forwards and I can tick things off as I, as I, as I do them which is kind of like a little trick that I've learned um, which is to once you've done something check it off and you feel like you're making progress the whole way through and to be honest the, the general the first draft wasn't terrible those two paragraphs obviously I'm very happy with because they've got ticks yes I know they're backwards I'm left-handed let's not go into that so it's going through addressing keywords tidying up plot lines rearranging where things should go and trying to work out actually have I made some simple mistakes I know 
when I've edited work before, for some reason there's like a subconscious word. I think one, when I was editing my longer work in progress, I'd use the word seemingly something like 78 times on the first 60 pages. So yeah, just checking for things like that. And just remember, don't be precious about this. If you've made a mistake, change it. If it doesn't make sense, change it. Now, I will apologise here because when I do finish all of this, um, I was going to record me um, retyping it all and I forgot to. Um, so, what I will say is if you are interested in reading the second part to this th uh, three part series, please check the links below. And I hope you had a pleasant time watching. You'll hear from me again soon. <laughs>